Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is John, the RPG Lord. Today we're going to talk about how to create an open world. Since it takes a lot of explanations on how to design an open world, I've decided to split this video up into several parts since a single video would become far too long. Today I want to talk to you about overall concerns that you might face when designing an open world. A few things to mention. Linear adventures are not railroading. Let's start out by listing a few things to remember. Over the past year, largely due to published adventures and an overabundance of video games, the typical D&D &D adventure has fallen out of favor. Uh, typical meaning a linear storyline that the players follow. There's this phenomenon among players that unless you have a massive open world to explore, it's not considered a good adventure. Personally, I think that is a rather sad attitude because some of the best adventures I have been a part of were linear. The main point here is that linear does not equal railroading. Let me repeat it. Linear is not railroading. A linear adventure follows a set storyline in which the players have agency, they make their own decisions, they can uh, change the outcome and the end of it. While in a railroading campaign, the GM limits the player's options and forces them to go his way into a certain direction. That is railroading. So they are radically different. The second thing I want you to remember Open worlds take a lot of work. Creating an open world, when done properly, takes a staggering amount of time and effort to create. One of my open world campaigns, I planned a whole year. I designed maps, I designed storylines, I designed dungeons. I wrote it all out, I picked the monsters, I had weather charts, I had modes of transportation. It is a staggering amount of work. If you believe that you can just plop down a map and let your players do whatever they want and it's going to result in a good game, then my friend, you're sorely mistaken. Doing that will only lead to boring gameplay because all you get is a bunch of random encounters, maybe a dungeon sprinkled in between. Don't do that. It's going to make boring gameplay and it's going to make your players very unhappy. Properly designed open worlds have a point to them. A major plot, side quests, and a logically connected world. You will only achieve that when you put a lot of effort and a lot of planning into that. You will need random encounters, several dungeons, main characters, NPCs, you might even need weather charts, day and night events, modes of transportation, and those are just to name a few. Another concern that I want you to remember is especially new and inexperienced players might get overwhelmed. They don't know the game well, they don't know where to go, and they are overwhelmed. It's kind of like the effect that you get when you are scrolling through Netflix and there are so many options that you don't even know where to start. If you have a group that doesn't play regularly, or well, that consists mostly of new players, I encourage you to start with a linear game. Uh, keep in mind that it took TSR, which is the company that originally invented Dungeons & Dragons, it took them 10 years before they came out with their first true open world, the Isle of Dread. It actually was packed in the expert set of Dungeons & Dragons. That was the first true open world published adventure to my knowledge. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Open worlds are something for experienced players and GMs. They are not for newbies. Now, how do you get started with an open world? First of all, as I said, if you're a new GM, I strongly urge you not to design an open world. You will get confused. You run into unexpected problems. You'll maybe burn yourself out on the preparations and then you might quit GMing altogether. You don't want that. I recommend that you have at least 300 hours of GMing and homebrewing under your belt before you even attempt to create an open world. Believe me, a nicely designed linear adventure is way better than a poorly designed open world. Your players will thank you for that. 
Now, if you're still interested in designing an open world, my first advice to you is to read a few published open world adventures. Uh, fifth edition D&D Curse of Strahd is a very good one. Or if that is too much reading for you, then the two uh, starter sets, um, which contain Lost Minds of Vandalvar or Dragons of Ice by a Peak, 5th edition starter set boxes, they contain uh, very short open world games. Both of them are excellent open world games that familiarize you uh, with how to set up your open world. Take note on how they are set up and play them with your group. That way you get an idea on how to run and them and what problems you might run into when you're designing your own. Also, you must really be quick to think on your feet. Preparing for the unexpected is the cardinal virtue when it comes to open world design. It doesn't matter how much you plan, how great your world is, and how intricate your plots are. There's always the chance that your players do something that is utterly unexpected and that they come up with a solution that annihilates all your planning. Be prepared for the unexpected. Be prepared for player solutions that you haven't anticipated. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Next time, I'm going to go over the detailed steps on how to design your open world. Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. And remember, there's only one RPG Lord. I wish you a good day.